Welcome to an integrated data enterprise, a blog and short video series speaking to the reasons to build an integrated enterprise and how to get there. This third post discusses how knowledge graph technology satisfies the requirements of a data fabric. If you haven't checked out the O'Reilly ebook, Rise of the Knowledge Graph yet, I highly recommend you do that. At the time of making this video, that ebook is the most current and comprehensive resource to help your organization get closer to achieving the vision of agile, secure, and complete data integration. Okay, let's narrow our focus to data fabrics and how this construct relates to knowledge graph technology. One fundamental capability of a data fabric is that it embraces a wide variety of technologies. And in fact, it should be flexible enough to adapt to any new technology. It would be short-sighted to rely on one particular technology. Nevertheless, any implementation of a data fabric will be built on some technology. We argue that knowledge graph technology in particular, based on W3C semantic web standards, namely RDF, RDFS, OWL, and SCOS, is the best way to achieve a successful data fabric or data mesh. Data fabric specifications tightly constrain the technical approach driving any solution toward RDF, OWL, and SCOS. One by one, let's review the requirements of a data fabric. The first requirement we discuss is flexibility in the face of complex or changing data. Change and complexity are the norm and ontology is easy to extend to accommodate new concepts and properties. Since an ontology in W3C, RDFS, and OWL is itself represented as a graph, it can be extended by merging it with new graphs or simply by adding new nodes into the graph. There is no need to re-engineer table structures and connections to accommodate new metadata, simply add it to the model. In contrast, relational database models change is expected. So ontology driven solutions readily accommodate changes. This flexibility derives from what is known as the open world assumptions. If you wanna learn more about this concept, I recommend you research the open world assumption. The next concept or the next requirement is to describe metadata in terms of business concepts. To reiterate, ontology is not bound to a particular technology. Data modelers develop ontologies that correspond to concepts familiar in the business. Ontologies lower the technical barriers for non-technical subject matter experts and users. Ontologies are human friendly and machine understandable. The third requirement is adaptability to cope with the unforeseen. For example, ask unanticipated questions at the speed of business or mission operations. The current information retrieval applications approach is entirely use case driven, but use cases and questions change. While the process of building a data structure to answer any particular question is well understood, the process for reuse is difficult and typically amounts to starting over. In contrast, a knowledge graph allows users to pivot their questions by following relationships in the graph. Explicit knowledge representation allows users to make sense of relationships for asking their known questions as well as their unanticipated questions. When requirements change drastically, semantic models also allow dynamic remodeling of data and the quick addition of new data sources to support new questions and new applications. Next, we require a data-centric approach as, a as opposed to an application-centric approach. Most data representations, especially relational databases, enclose data in applications of some sort. There is no standard way to exchange data and the models that describe it on a large scale from one platform to another. 
ETL projects are expensive and brittle. Too much human capital is applied to data preparation, which hinders analytic outcomes. Semantic web standards relieve this problem in an extreme way by providing not only a way to write and read data, but also a standard for specifying how to do this on an industrial scale. Data exchange is already possible on a very large scale from one vendor software to another. The increased interoperability that the knowledge graph yields enables data to be the centerpiece of an enterprise information policy. The next requirement is to treat the data as a product with service level agreements, customer satisfaction, et cetera. An outcome of a data fabric is that the data now becomes valuable in its own right. Providing data is a way that one part of the organization can support another part of the organization. The shift in emphasis on data is sometimes referred to as seeing the data as a product. That is to say, someone who provides data takes on the same responsibilities that we expect of anyone else who is providing a product, including guarantees, documentation, service agreements, responses to customer requests, and so on. When someone views data as a product, other parts of the organization are less likely to wanna to take over maintenance of their own version of the data. An important feature of the semantic web standards, namely RDF, RDFS, and SCOS, go beyond simple syntactic standards. Each of them is based on sound mathematical logic. Since most enterprises don't have staff logicians, this might seem like a rather obscure academic feature, but it supports key capabilities for viewing data as a product. While these standards, with these standards, it is possible to know exactly what a set of data means in a mathematical sense, and hence to know when some data provided in response to a request satisfies a requirement for a data service. This is analogous to having clear requirements and metrics for other kinds of products. You can't support a service level agreement for a product if you don't know what services have been promised. The last requirement is to adhere to the FAIR principles of making data findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. The FAIR principles place a variety of requirements on data and metadata representations, which are supported by a standardized knowledge graph. Explicit knowledge representation makes it possible to find data that is appropriate for a particular task. Globally referenceable terms in the form of URIs allow for interoperability since one data or metadata set can refer to any other. The web basis of the semantic web standards allow them to interoperate natively with web-based accessibility standards and the extensibility of an ontology encourages reuse. Finally, FAIR is not explicitly a semantic web recommendation, but the semantic web covers all the bases when it comes to building a FAIR data infrastructure. Okay, that concludes this video. And then my next blog post will encompass how to get started building your data fabric. Thank you.